Welcome to another edition of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. Once again, I'm doing a variety of different character voices until someone complains. Here's the lineup for this week. The news, of course, community bulletin board, and 55 plus news. But also some special features. Michael Shea will share his experiences as election chief at the Westover Precinct, and Miriam Gennari will be back with a report on the upcoming turkey trot. Finally, we'll show an appearance by artist David Carlson. That's the show. Now here's the social media reminder. You can watch us on YouTube at Arlington Weekly News and the number one, also on Facebook, and you can listen on the radio at WERA 96.7 FM. Now, on to the news. As of Sunday evening, November 8th, Reports show the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Arlington had exceeded 5,000. Regular viewers and listeners will note the intensified increase in our reported case numbers. Next up for election results, all we can say is that Arlington's election results will not be officially certified until November 16th. We'll have those results in our pre-Thanksgiving show. However, we do have a post-election message from Michael Shea, election chief at the Westover Precinct. Here's Michael. I guess the best way to sum up how election day at Westover Precinct in Arlington went this year was that we got through it. We had some challenges, uh, but we got through. We kept everybody safe. And uh, more than 500 voters were able to come in and vote uh, with confidence, and their votes were counted, um, and their votes were secure. Um, you know, if you listen to the, a lot of the national media and a lot of the conversation um, in, during the campaign, you might have had a reason to be worried about possible um, confrontation or voter intimidation. Uh, but I'm very glad to say that we avoided that at our precinct. Uh, we did have some technical problems. Uh, we had some problems with our scanners. Uh, and thankfully, the voters um, who got somewhat delayed by that were very patient with us. Uh, we had a great response from the central office. Um, we needed new equipment. We needed some technical knowledge. Um, and as they do throughout any of the precincts in Arlington, um, they're very supportive. Um, we had um, a lot of our poll workers were uh, new to the task because there have been uh, election officials uh, who've done this for many years in Arlington. But this year, uh, with the pandemic, um, because of maybe a health condition or perhaps because of their age, um, they decided to sit this one out. Um, Arlington County put out a call, and um, the community did a great job in responding. And we had a lot of first-time poll workers um, who did the training um, and worked hard all day, and it is a long day, um, but we got through it, and uh, people voted. Um, and personally, I'm one of these people, like everyone else, I have political views, I have candidates I support, but more than that, I think I think of myself as a small-D Democrat. I am inspired by democracy, I'm inspired by voting. Um, so when we put in a long day and we make the process work, we make the votes count, and hopefully everyone who comes in uh, feels welcome and feels safe in voting. Um, that inspires me. Um, and like I was alluding to earlier, we did have some challenges, and at Westover, probably the biggest challenge uh, was that early in the morning, uh, there was a gas odor um, outside the school by the generator, and it uh, was noticeable as you walked in the engines we were using uh, for the voters. And so we consulted with the staff there at APS, Arlington Public Schools, um, 
And soon after that, uh, a crew from Washington Gas arrived. Um, they examined the situation. They decided they were going to work on it. We had more crews arriving. Um, at one point, we changed the door that voters were going to use to keep everybody safe. Um, we used the main door to the school rather than the door of the gym. Um, so the, the door was about 70 or 80 feet away on the same side of the school. And we always had election officials out there in case any voters trying to come in and vote got confused or were uncertain about what was happening. Um, so that was, a, that was pretty... Um, that was a pretty significant challenge. Um, uh, but I think everyone was safe during it, during it, and I know the crews worked hard on it, and we got through it, as I, as I keep saying. Um, so uh, overall, I think it was a good election year. Um, we only had about 500 voters uh, come in and vote, a little more than 500 voters come in to vote on Tuesday. Um, and I say only uh, in the sense that while that number is down than what we normally would see in a presidential election year, uh, we had such an increase in the number of people during early voting in Arlington, as well as the number of people who did absentee ballots. Both of those um, numbers were up extensively over previous years. So overall, the turnout for presidential election year in Westover and in Arlington generally was um, along the lines of what it's been. But on the day of the election, we did actually see fewer people come through. But um, I would call it a success. Thanks to Michael Shea for his comments. Now it's time for more of a longtime seasonal feature, part two of the Leaf Collection Report, which old Ben calls The Suck Truck Cometh. The next neighborhoods visited by the Arlington Leaf Collection will be on November 18th through 23rd, Arlington East Falls Church, Arlington Forest, Arlington Heights, Arlington Ridge, Arlingwood, Buckingham, Chainbridge, Columbia Forest, Dover Crystal, Rivercrest, Riverwood, and Yorktown. Then, from November 23rd to 28th, Bellevue Forest, Country Club Hills, Donaldson Run, Gulf Branch, Maywood, Old Glebe, Rock Spring, Williamsburg, and Woodmont. We will have more information next week. That's the news. Now it's time for Community Bulletin Board for CBB. Hi, and welcome to CBB. This first message is for kids aged 6 to 11, and it's called Going Nuts. Let's explore what Arlington's animals are doing to prepare for winter. Gathering nuts and seeds? Moving to warmer places? For information, you can call 703-228-3403, and they will email you a link to Microsoft Teams before the program start time. They do ask that you have your device ready to go before the start of the program. Registration is required, so you can register online or call 703-228-4747 and mention activity number 612-820-J. That's on Wednesday, November 18th from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. and it is a virtual event. This next event is for kids aged three to five years, and it's all about beavers. Now these preschool programs are offered throughout the year at both Gulf Branch and Long Branch Nature Centers, and the theme for preschool programs is repeated during the month. So please register for only one session at each nature center per month. Caretakers must stay with their child during the program, and registration is required. You can register online or call 703-228-4747 and the activity number is 612-910-K. That's coming up on Thursday, November 19th from 1 o'clock to 1.30 p.m. at Long Branch Nature Center at Glen Carlin Park, 
625 South Carlin Springs Road. That's right, this is not a virtual event. You and your child actually get to go someplace. Next, we have an event for teens aged 11 to 17 years. It's an outdoor skate at the Quincy parking deck. They can get their skate on while listening to music. Participants must bring their own skates and wear a mask. You can register online or call 703-228-4747 and mention activity number 7820063. That's on Saturday, November 21st from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at the Quincy Street parking deck at North Quincy Street and 15th Street North. It's next to Washington Liberty High School. Next, we have an event for families. Join up for a park pop-up. You can meet a naturalist or historian at one of our neighborhood parks to discover the nature and history of Arlington. The staff person may bring hands-on learning items, artifacts, or activities. The event will be canceled if it's raining. For information, you can call 703 228-3403. Registration is required for both children and adults. You can register online or call 703-228-4747 and mention activity number 612-850-QQ. That's on Saturday, November 21st from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at Quincy Park, 1021 North Quincy Street. Finally, here's something for art lovers. Flattening Time, an exhibition by David Carlson, is now open by appointment. The show runs through December 20th, 2020, and you can schedule a private tour by calling 703-405-1642. The available hours are from Thursday through Sunday from 12 to 7 o'clock p.m. The location is the Fred Schneider Gallery at 888 North Quincy Street, Suite 102. Now it's time for 55 Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. Ever heard of TikTok? I remember him as one of the characters in the Oz books, but it turns out now it's something else, too. It's the new social media app they say is taking the world by storm. Probably not a twister, though. You can learn all about what it is and why it's so popular and whether or not this fun, creative, random smartphone video app is for you. There will be a demonstration and a Q&A session featuring 55-plus center director Sidney Reed. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. Just mention activity number 911-403-38. It's coming up on Wednesday, November 18th from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m., and it is a virtual event. Next up, for those of you who miss open mic nights, here's a chance for you to sing a song, recite a poem, or tell some jokes. Performers will have a maximum of three minutes for each act, and time slots are limited to the first eight people who want to come and share their talent. However, Everyone's welcome to watch and enjoy the show. Just register online or call 703-228-4747 and that's activity number 911-802-8. And that's on Wednesday, November 18th from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Now this is another virtual event, which also means that if you do perform, you'll be safe from anyone who wants to throw rotten tomatoes. Now the next event is called the Wild West in Arlington, but that name only works if you're from someplace like Greenbelt. 
Anyway, in the 1890s, there was a place called Jackson City, which was in what is now Arlington County. It was a lawless place of gambling, illegal liquor, and vice. George Axiotis, a local historian and the author of Shootout at Jackson City, will discuss a deputy sheriff's raid gone wrong that turned into the largest shootout in the area's history. Prepare to be surprised by this fascinating chapter in Arlington's past. Just register online or call 703-228-4747 and mention activity number 911-400-28. That's on Thursday, November 19th from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Now, this last event is called Basic Drawing. You can join Jen Droblian from DPR's Office of Community Arts for an afternoon of drawing. You can improve your skills by learning different techniques. More details and a simple supply list will be provided with your registration confirmation. Register online or call, you guessed it, 703 228 4747. The activity number is 911 301 19, and that's on Friday, November 20th, from 1 o'clock to 2 30 p.m. Well, that's about it for 55 plus news. Now it's time for Miriam Janari and her special feature about the 2020 Turkey Trump. Many think the season of giving is a month long, but in Arlington, Virginia, caring and sharing is a year-round endeavor that builds to a burst of joy on Thanksgiving morning. Family fun and generosity is how Arlingtonians get their kicks. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. Summer's gone, fall is here, and it's time to talk turkey. And here with Arlington's most tender-hearted turkey, Mark Riley. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Miriam. Um, hello, Arlington. It is turkey time. So how do you think that this kind of primes the pump to have the right attitude for what, what is the holiday season? I, I think it primes the pump because people that are part of the trot and have been part of the trot for many, many years, they, they love being a part of it because it's, it's tradition, because they're having fun, and because of the beneficiary component that they're helping others. Given the precautions necessary amid COVID-19 and the importance of maintaining social distancing, the Arlington Turkey Trot's 15th anniversary will be a virtual run in 2020. With Trot Week just around the corner, the time has come for all tried and true trotters to sign up, walk, and run and carry on the tradition of the family fun of helping those that benefit from your participation. Together, we can make this fun outdoor event the most successful trot yet and plot a course for the future. The locations are as follows. The Lion Park Christ Church course, the Boston Good Company course, the Sherlington Best Buns course, the Columbia Pike Celtic House course, the Washington and Old Dominion Trail Bluemont North Course, the Washington and Old Dominion Trail Bluemont South Course, and for National Landing, the race will start at Commonwealth Joe. Love your old Turkey Trot t-shirt? At last you can tell the world why. Vote for your favorite t-shirt design with 15 choices to choose from from 2006 to 2020 on social media and at Christ Church pick up November 23rd and 24th. A raffle will follow with a good company gift certificate awarded to the winner. Adult trotter fee this year is $40 and for children six to 17, it's 20. All runners will receive an Arlington Turkey Trot cotton tee and bib. During registration, you can upgrade to a long sleeve performance tee for an additional $20. Major Tom masks will also be available and for sale for $5. 
packet pickup will take place at Christ Church of Arlington, 320 North Pershing Drive in Arlington, Virginia, 22201, on both Monday, November 23rd from 12 to 6 p.m. and Tuesday, November 24th from 12 to 6 p.m. Additionally, you can choose to have your items shipped to you and they will be mailed for an additional $5. Register and run virtually and donate funds to support AFAC, ASPAN, Thrive, Bridges, OAR, and Young Life. All are supporting Arlingtonians in need of a hand up. Even if you can't join us for the virtual Thanksgiving tradition, you can donate to support these great local Arlington charities. A brief history and some fun facts about the turkey trout. Now entering its 15th year, the Arlington Turkey Trot was founded in 2006 by Pastor Brian Webster and his wife Diane of Christ Church of Arlington. They came to our community to assist the poor and the needy, those in search of a friend, good food, childcare, and a place to call home. The members of Christ Church of Arlington, now under the leadership of Pastor Billy Boyce, are continuing that spirit to embrace their Arlington neighbors. Over the course of 14 years, the trot has generated nearly $900,000 to help Arlington's residents in need. With 300 trotters, 4,200 was raised. In 2019, the turkey trot had over 4,000 participants and raised nearly $100,000 for the six nonprofit beneficiaries. We have an opportunity to make this the most successful trot yet with eight locations around Arlington County for people to run anytime they like on Thanksgiving Day. Remember, whenever and wherever you run, you are keeping the spirit of our traditional turkey trot alive. You are still helping to build and strengthen our community. And most of all, realize that you are not really running alone. For those who have run before, you will be rekindling memories of past successful runs. And for those for whom this is the first time, you will be laying a solid foundation for a wealth of memories yet to come. I have to say thank you to the wonderful sponsors yeah. that help put this event on. You couldn't do it without the sponsors. So yeah, we have some great sponsors um, every year. We have the Mayflower and the Pilgrim and the Gobbler sponsors. Um, and there are several uh, that have been uh, what I would call uh, stalwarts, you know, from the beginning. And I'm not going to mention any at the moment because, thank because all of I them. will leave somebody out, but I will thank all of the ones who have been absolutely with us from the beginning. Absolutely. A as, as his bridge is to independence yes. been a, a uh, uh, beneficiary yes. from 2006. And you look at how wonderful the organization is and how they're growing. I love this builder um, attire you have on. Uh, can you just tell me, uh, registration's already begun, correct? Yes. Okay, so what do people do? So you go to ArlingtonVATurkeyTrot.org and you go to the registration button yes, and then bingo, it puts you right in there. You fill the thing out and you're in. That's fantastic. It's going to be another yeah. great year. Yes, it will. Are be. you predicting the weather? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. No, not 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 yet. Rain, rain or too, shine? It's too it's too early. I expect that it's going to be chilly. Uh huh. Cold. Uh, it, slash cold. <laughs> okay. Hopefully no snow. But and no rain and no ice. But no matter what, we're going. Well, we're going. We're going. Yeah. All right. And and you know, um, here at the Arlington Weekly News and the Sustainable Scoop, we've been supporting the turkey trot by attending and videotaping all of the families and the children and the pets year after year. And now we'd like to make an appeal to all of your trotters to remember Arlington Independent Media, especially now during the Thanksgiving season. We invite you to come by the station, make a donation, tell us what you think. And if you want, if you can't give money, then volunteer. So you can come by here. We're just next to Whole Foods and see us. Um, okay, Turkey? That's, that's <laughs> awesome. I'm just going to add one quick thing, and that is, is that I really appreciate 
on behalf of our community the work that Arlington Independent Media has been doing over the last few years, and Miriam Gennari in particular. You guys have been just awesome, and I am thrilled that we are in partnership. Thankful to have all of you here with us and to be together on Thanksgiving. And we're having a great time. Please come out and join us and help us raise funds for the six beneficiaries, AFAC, ASPAN, Arlington Thrive, Bridges to Independence, OAR, and Young Life. And that concludes this week's show. We will be back next week with more news from Arlington. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. smaller than the original piece that I showed you. This was called uh, uh, Opening and Closing. And by the way, the titles really come after the work is finished. Uh, I really don't have uh, any idea about what the paintings are while I'm working on them. Um, and it's this kind of intuitive approach to uh, being creative. Uh, I like to talk about the abstraction uh, as being the reality. Um, because at one point I was asking myself a question, what's the nature of reality? And it, it seems to me that reality is always moving. It's never static. Uh, everything is always in motion. So, you know, in the time we live in now, uh, everything is like kind of held in place in some ways internally, it feels this way. And some things are moving very rapidly. So there's this tension between stillness and movement. Uh, in this painting, um, I kind of look at the central part of it uh, right through here, which kind of holds everything together in a way. The paint's a little thicker, more of an impasto. You can see the texture of it more so. Um, and then the tension between the, the lightness or the whiteness and the black, and then the colors. And another thing that uh, is true of all of the work, uh, as I started to think about this idea of flattening time, which is the name of the show, and like one part is more the present time, something is the past and something is the future. Mm -hmm. And that's subject to change depending on how I'm thinking about it or looking at it, uh, the painting at any time. Um, when I started to use this kind of flat color in all of the work, uh, what happened is it really started to then change what happens over here. So there's this kind of binary uh, uh, code that works within the composition. Uh, so the kind of flatness and, and, and the beautiful color, the minute I put that color down, it affected this side. And that's kind of how the formal issues work in terms of composition. Mm -hmm.